in the woods today, L.A. discovered a charming little landmark. The Pet Cemetery. The whole town's been using this place for generations. Folks make a kind of ritual out of it. It's not some campfire story. I saw these in the trees up there. They're warnings. They fear that place. There's something up there. Something that dates way back. Something that brings things back. Cheers. I know what you're thinking of doing. But they don't come back the same. Daddy. So, Remix, were you ever nervous about taking this on, knowing that people react pretty strongly to Remix if it's not what they want? Oh, yeah. We had a lot I of positions. Was, yeah. yeah. I was even nervous about myself, the way I react to them, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. You, always gotta, you always gotta go back to the Remix that did it right. The fly and the thing, you know. There's, and there's a lot of good ones, you know. And I think the ones that get it right are the ones that go back to the source material, you know. Yeah. And they do. And it's not so much a, uh, like a, a remake as a reinterpretation or readaptation, readaptation of the novel, which is how we treated this, you know. You can't ignore the first film and, how, and all the great things it did right. And you can be inspired by that, as we were. We were huge fans of the first film. But we went back and we just reread and reread and reread the novel. And we realized that there was so much stuff to mine for the novel that hadn't been tapped yet. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was really exciting. So. I think you improved on one thing, like majorly improved. Right. I love the movie, but there's one thing that you majorly improved, which would give everything away, so I'm not going to do that. I think I know what you're talking about. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, why, what about, why, what is it about Stephen King that works for you? I mean, this is such a, there's such meat in this yeah. story. Yeah. There's yeah. such meat there. I mean, I think for, for me, it's uh, the relatable characters and these universal themes that, that are always present in his works. I mean, like, you read these characters and these families, and they just feel, like, so real. I mean, like, you read, when you read Pet Cemetery, like, I mean, reading all the inner thoughts uh, of the characters, yeah. I mean, everything's, you know, like, you really get into these characters' minds, and, like, and he doesn't hold back. He doesn't pull punches no. at all. No. And, uh... And I think that, like, like I said, it's the universal themes. Like, Pet Cemetery is about grief and death, and it's like everybody has to experience that in their lives, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's like that's why you were saying it's a remake before. That's why it was a movie thirty years ago. That's why it's a movie now. And there'll be another one in thirty years, and thirty years after that. And I think they'll probably keep making Stephen King books forever. The way that, like, you know, like there's so many different versions of other other classic classic no novels. You know, yeah. I think he'll always be around because he deals with relatable characters and universal themes that'll always, that are timeless. Hey, you guys do something here, which I mentioned to Lorenzo, the, the procession yeah. is really inventive. Oh, good, okay. How did that come about? The, that was something that was, it was in the script before we came on board. And I think, to the producer's credit, we fought them all the time. We were like, this, <laughs> why is this scene here? These kids are not a plot in point. They never come back. And I think at the end of the day, really, uh, their atmosphere, you know, and they're they're part of the environment, the folklore, and I think that having them early in the movie sort of like sets a tone on the movie that there's this otherworldliness of the woods and this town and things that we're not gonna we're not gonna give you all the answers to these questions, you know, mm -hmm. and we don't with that. But mm -hmm. I think it sets a mood which kind of you know pervades the film in a good yeah. way. Yeah, and trying to make uh, making the world bigger than you know. Yes. I mean, like yeah. in, in, in yeah. the in Pet Cemetery, it's like you've got the Creed House, Judge House right here, there, and you, yeah. that's where most of the that's movie the happens. Yeah. So it's like just kind of expanding on that. When you read the book, it's like they, they, they talk so much about like all the past uh, and mm -hmm. people that have been there and all the kids that care for and groom the, the pet cemetery and stuff. So we just wanted to get a little uh, the taste ritual of that, of that yeah. world and the, yeah, the ritual of it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, if you could do another Stephen King, oh, what would you do? Man. Uh, Chattery it, teeth. Chattery teeth. <laughs> no, I know they're doing Tommy Knockers, and I, I, yeah. mean, I, I love the Tommy Knockers. You know, I, I think that's a great book, but uh, I love Salem's Lot. I think that's one of his best. Salem's Lot is great. Uh, the Stand, they're doing a TV show out of. You know, we'd love to do some of that. I mean, that's great. Yeah. But yeah, Kevin was saying some of his short stories are the best. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like it's funny growing up, like reading Stephen King. Like he's got such a 
big body of work. There was a lot of novels that I didn't get to, but I remember like I read all the short story collections, all the novella yeah. collections. Like I really, and I think there's so much stuff in there that's untapped that like could yeah. make great stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We have a second chance. Sometimes dead is better.